So this is Dustin Perrier, Giant Rocket Ship, doing my office hours for Autotask. And uh, again, a little background. I uh, ran an MSP for 20 years. A lot of the time I spent using and managing and fine tuning Autotask. Uh, we launched Giant Rocket Ship, which automates the dispatch assignment and scheduling of your technicians for you. Reduces ticket time, ticket labor, and grind. That said, this is about Autotask. And so we're going to go through a couple of things. I'm going to be sharing my screen. And let's see here. Now, sometimes people um, report they can't quite hear me well. So if you have any issues in hearing me, just put it into the message chat. I will see that and respond and or fix the situation. That said, right now, um, you should be seeing my Autotask screen. And in that screen, what you're seeing is just a, a, a dashboard from uh, uh, from Rocketship. But what we're going to focus on today, and in fact, I just replied and, and created a blog for somebody on Facebook um, in the Autotask group that had a question about reports. So it's a common need. What she needed was a report that showed her all recurring service contracts that were missing a service or had a zero quantity for the service. So think to your billing. You have all these customers in these contracts and every once in a while, it's just reality, something's gonna slip. For example, maybe you've set up a contract and over time you've added and removed services and then you don't really realize it, but you're missing um, the services of the contract just through um, a mistake in the creation of it or you've over time just removed things and you're not recognizing the fact that you don't have any services you're billing. That could be for a MSP contract, or you may have a recurring service contract used for billing product, software, hardware rentals, things of that nature. And so she just wanted a report that she could run on a regular basis to verify all of her contracts had some type of billable service against them. Now, most people would say, well, this is not actually possible because in live reports, it wants to report on, let me make sure you can see this. It wants to report on data that you have, right? It doesn't want to show you data that you don't have. Now, that's not actually correct, and I'm going to show you how this works. It is possible to create a live report that has, um, uh-oh, it looks like I lost my screen share. Let me reshare this. There we go. Okay, the screen sharing should be re-enabled. Sorry about that. It was the, the webinar software just stopped the sharing. All right, so now you're just seeing my live report view. And again, people assume that because of the way live reports works, it only shows you data in the database. But you can actually build reports that show you when no data is in your database, right? I would say maybe 1% of people are aware of this ability. Uh, and it's because it's it's the thinking of how you do it is a little backwards, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create that report. And I'm gonna show you how you can use certain features and calculations um, in Autotask to produce these, uh, let's call them a negative report, right? A negative quantity or a negative data report. I'm gonna create a new report and it's gonna be a standard report, right? And we're gonna call this so, um, contract with no services. Now for the category, and here we go. And so for the category, I am gonna choose, I'm gonna be very intentional here. I'm gonna choose my con, let's see. I think it's contract balance. That's not it, which one is it? It's gonna be recurring service contracts, kind of obvious uh, when you look at it. And I'm gonna first select my contract because what I wanna do is I, re I wanna report on the contract. So we're going to make that our first uh, our first selection. And then I'm going to click down to the detail of what I want. Now, I, I, I need these categories because this is what we'll be reporting off of, right? And so now I'm going to click Next. And the sort's going to be very important. First, you would want to logically sort this report by account and then by contract because we're going to be grouping by contract. So just go ahead and sort it by um, account. And then to ensure it's 
it sorted and grouped properly. You don't want to sort it by the name of the contract or even the type. You want to sort it by the ID. In other words, keep all of my contract items in a group, right? So now I'm going to click Next. And for filters, just obviously, it needs to be yes. Contract active equals yes. We don't want to report on non-active ones. Now, you can use this. Actually, it's probably going to make it prettier. I always skip it. Um, my reports are much uglier than the defaults. Uh, and so actually, I encourage you to learn that last one. But I'm just so used to not using it. So here's the trick, and here's how we're going to do it. And let's think through this. We want a report that shows when a contract has no values, right? And so what is the detail in that situation? It's not going to be the contract. What we're going to do is we need to figure out how do we figure out how a contract has no services, right? The detail here would not be the contract. It's going to be the service. And for now, we'll just put service code here. But I'm going to want to group it into group footer. I want to group it into the contract. So just thinking through this, OK, so I'm going to have my account, and I'm going to have my contract name, right? And um, let's just see what that produces. So let's go ahead and run this. And, and personally, whenever I'm building a report, I I mean, I just go through little iterations of running it to see where I'm at. Um, I find it difficult to do it all from, from the, from the get-go. And so, okay, that's my contract line. That's my footer. And these are my details. Interesting. So one thing you're going to notice here is notice how this, okay, that's my line, and that's one item, software as a service. But these have nothing. Okay, so that's kind of logical. That makes sense. Now. What we can also do is, um, let's go ahead and put a number in here. And um, the trick we're going to be kind of moving toward is how you can use sums and conditional formatting to build this report. And also, sometimes I like to just kind of play in live reports, kind of see what's available. And so I'll just kind of work through it. Now, what's interesting here is notice that these were blank lines. But now that I have forced it to always say one in those lines, notice for the detail, it's actually including the line with it, even though there's no data in there. And that's the key, right? So the service code, so now we just need to know, OK, so we always get a row there, even if there's no service. So we can do a conditional here to say one if there's a service, zero if there's not a service. You probably see where I'm going here. If, uh, let's see, we could do like a conditional um, if it has data, but that's not going to be the easiest way. Really what we want to do here is we're going to use quantity. And the reason we're going to use quantity here is this report could also show you if you have services not that are only missing, but if the quantity is zero, which you may also want, right? So now look at this. If D4, right, equals zero, let's just do it like this, then say, yes, we have data. Otherwise, we have no data. And so we're going to run this little puppy for the millionth time, and we're going to run it a, a million more times. We're just going to see where we're going. And uh, if you have any questions, just put it in there. Okay, interesting. Look, zero, no data, no data, 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 no data, no data, no data. So look, Autotask actually is giving us information about no lines here. We just have to know how to use it, right? And so, so now what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, we could put a conditional here, um, but it's easier just like, and this is why I like to put numbers in here. I'm going to say sum up my E4 form, field rather. And look what it's going to give us. If there's no data in that contract, the sum of zero is going to be zero. But if there's any data, the sum is going to be some number larger than zero. Like this has seven services in it. 
right, with units. This is zero services in it with units. Okay, so now this is the flag that we need to know whether or not we have data or services rather with quantities, right? We're solving two problems here uh, in this contract. I'm gonna save this. Sometimes, you know, live reports locks up, don't wanna lose my data. And so what we're gonna do now is let's make this prettier. This is a really hard report to read. So we're gonna go through a couple iterations of this. No, actually this is just my, let's call it a tabulation row. I'm just calculating things in this row. I don't actually need that data. And so the first thing we're gonna do to clean up this report, to make it where your accountant or even a, an office administrator, um, office assistant, anybody could read this report without having to really dig into Autotask. And so let's take a look at it. I just hid my little calculation row. Mm, look, bam, 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 bam. These two contracts have no services, but we can take this a step further, right? Let's really make this pretty. The worst thing you can do in a report um, and it's the reason I, I, I hate email notifications that people set up, is you train your team to ignore the notification. If you send somebody a notification, 20 emails a day, that they have a ticket update, and then out of those 20, one of the notifications is red alert, you need to look at this, they're going to start ignoring it, right? It's pointless to do these things. We want to train our people that if we notify them of something, they need to look at it. It's urgent to us, right? We kind of embed that philosophy into rocket ship. If it's in front of you, it's actionable. Otherwise, we don't put it in front of you, right? So why are we training our staff to ignore all these numbers? Yeah, we can make it red, but why just not hide the unnecessary information? That's where con conditional formatting comes in. So check this out. Just like we suppress this row, now we suppress every one of these rows, we can conditionally suppress any row that has data we don't care about. So I'm gonna click this little button here, and that's my, my formatter. I'm gonna to go to my conditional formatting, very powerful tool. I'm gonna suppress my row if, and what is that, that is five, E5. I'm gonna suppress this row if, E5 is greater than zero. I think that's how we do it. I, I don't think you put equals. And so I think you just do this. Now, in theory, we're only gonna show good data in this report. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. Awesome. Now look at this. We've created a report for data that does not exist in Autotask. We've eliminated the noise, and now we have a report that shows us contracts we should look at, and it doesn't bother you with any other data. That means every time I look at this report, if I see a single line on there, it's actionable. I never train me, myself, or my staff to ignore a report, right? Only actionable data. And I'm able to flag things that should not be happening. And in this report, the thing that should not happen is you should not have a contract with no services or a quantity of zero on the services. There's really no logical reason to ever have a contract like that, right? And so even if it's a no charge contract, you should have quantities on it, right? Because otherwise, what's the point of having the contract and auto test? So now we have this report. And so it's a little convoluted unless you understand what you're looking for. And just a heads up, this is how you would do it in good old Crystal Reports. A lot of reporting tools, this is how you build, again, what I'm gonna call a negative report, which is how do you build a report that shows when there is no data? And typically you're gonna use a detail line to calculate, hey, I don't have data in this field, therefore this is the data that I need that I have no data. Right. So I hope that was helpful to you. So that was my focus area. Again, a lot of these uh, questions I either get for, via email, Dustin at giantrocketship.com, and that's how I'll tackle them. Uh, and then sometimes I will kind of uh, look around on the forums. I like to use those so I can write a blog um, against them so that other people know how to solve them in the future. And so this was one I found on the Facebook um, Autotask group. But again, feel free to email me your questions. And uh, that's what we're going to be um, tackling today. If you have any questions, just let me know. I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you. Bye.